a river bend pentecostal rally towel i mean handkerchief <laughs> whatever that's awesome that's awesome we are so honored to be here tonight thank you again for having us all of you uh sanctuaryites for being here thank you good to see all of y'all down here tonight <laughs> be down here amongst all the river bendites <laughs> amen micah chapter number four Micah chapter number four will begin reading in verse number six. Hallelujah. Yes, we are, uh, uh, Brother Brian and myself will be driving a 26 foot U haul trailer that is cram packed full. We'll be leaving about four o'clock in the morning, headed down to Baton Rouge. The, uh, the, the 53 foot semi, it's already left on its way down there. And uh, I know there's several of y'all here that have a family down in Baton Rouge. Send them to Acacia Church. That's uh, the name of one of the United Pentecostal Churches down there. Send them there tomorrow. All of the supplies will be there at some point. <laughs> and if you need paper towels, that's the place to go. We got, <laughs> wow, uh, Beaver Janitorial Supply gave us eight, I'm sorry, got that mixed up, four pallets filled with paper towels. Wow. Alone. Just unbelievable. Unbelievable. There's so much, so much. I could talk for that on for a while, but thank you all for all the prayers that's going on down there. My wife, uh, she's from down there in that area, and so a lot of family also. And, you know, it's it seems, the, the tragedies always seem different when you got a family connection to it, you know? And uh, so all of you, Brother Keen was telling me that some of y'all may be going down this week and doing some sheet rock, sheet rock work, different things like that. That's awesome. Whatever you can do, I believe whatever we do, whoever it ends up for, it's all for his glory anyway. So, amen. Amen. Whew, I've been looking forward to this, Brother Keen. Micah chapter 4, verse number 6. And in that day, somebody say it's a prophecy. prophecy. Something's going to come in a later day. Yes. Saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. And I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off, a strong nation. All of these people that are lame, all of these people that were driven out, wandering aimlessly in a life filled with sin, even the people that God Himself had afflicted, the judgment of God was on their life. Even those people, he said, I'm going to make a remnant out of them. Right. Brother McKinney, there's going to be a select group of them. They are going to become a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth, even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, look at your neighbor and go, <laughs> you're the flock. O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. A uh, little news flash here. We're the daughter of Jerusalem. We're the offspring of the Jews. The law started among the Jews but was fulfilled with Jesus. And now we're the church that has been born. The church is the daughter of Jerusalem. And it's to the dot, my God, the daughter of Jerusalem that the kingdom is going to come. Yeah. With the help of the Lord tonight, I want to preach the return of the first dominion. 
The return of the first dominion. Lord, this is for your glory. Speak to your people tonight. Stir our hearts. Mold us. God, give us a fresh revelation of who we are in you tonight, oh God. And we give you all the glory for it tonight. Let your word go forth with free course. We bind and rebuke every hindrance in the name of Jesus. And we loose your spirit to work and your word to go forth freely, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated praising the Lord tonight. Unto thee shall it come. Yes. Jesus himself was not the kingdom. He was the one over the kingdom. Jesus, even at this moment, is trying to restore... His kingdom. Yes, he, is. Yes, he, is. he even told the church, you need to pray. Let thy kingdom. Oh. Yes. Hmm. This should be normal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Unity should never be amazing. Unity should be normal. I, I'm telling y'all, I'm not saying this just because it's us, but one of the greatest things that two churches can have is pastors that are friends. Because if we're at odds with one another, y'all going to be at odds. But if you know we're close... I had an elder tell me before when I first started pastoring, he said, the greatest way to confront church hopping is to become close friends with pastors. Let that sail up there. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. I'm, I'm on, the Lord uh, has shown me some stuff. I'm going to deal with some stuff tonight, and then I'm going to preach about the kingdom. But uh, we we gotta we gotta make sure we're all on the same page. Yes, so Ephesians chapter four, starting with verse number one. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Say it with me. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Well, that don't leave room for two, does it? That's pretty cut and dried right there. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in y'all. I need to teach y'all a couple things before I can preach. The scripture says that we are to, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering. It says, forbearing one another in love. Forbearing. Are y'all ready for your deep uh, Greek word uh, etymology study of what these words really mean? Do you, you want to learn something or not? All right, this is going to be deep, so get ready. All right. Forbearing one another. For all of you Bible scholars, I'm going to tell you what the real translation in the original Greek is. Putting up with folks. <laughs> Well, that's deep, wasn't it? Yeah. Boy, you was wanting something that'd make you shout. You didn't want something that's going to hit you right square between the eyes. Paul said, if we are going to keep the unity of the Spirit, then we got to put up with each other. Hey, some days you may not like someone or how they do it or what they... They might walk right past you down at the supermarket, but the Bible says, hey, if we're in this one body, we're going to have to put up with each other. That's good preaching. Yes, sir. Preach that a while. I don't 
don't have a whole lot of time to stay there, but if you want me to, you're writing a check. So <laughs> to put up with one another. <sighs> Next time you want to hit send or, or hit post, you need to ask yourself, am, am I really putting up with them or am I? The unity of the Spirit. Mm. Man, I'm feeling happy in Jesus right now. This is... You see, tonight, in this service, I believe that that one Spirit that we just read about is going to enter into this one body and heal minds, bodies, and spirits. Tonight. Tonight. Before we leave here, that one Spirit, one God and Father of all, is going to come into this body and heal some of y'all. Not just your physical body. He's going to heal some minds. He's going to heal some hearts. And He's going to heal some spirits and fill people with the Holy Ghost. You see, unity is powerful. Unity. They were in one mind and one accord on the day of Pentecost. Uh, Acts 4, it says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. Unity is incredibly powerful. When people come together for one purpose. Now I'm going to deal with some stuff for just a minute. If you are not living in the unity of the Spirit, then you are not living in the will of God. All right. All right. All right. You see, it's never the will of God for you to be at odds with a brother or a sister. be in the unity of the Spirit while you're in the disunity of the church. You, if you're going to Facebook something, that's what you need to Facebook. You, the unity of the Spirit is to be at one with God. You at one with God if you're at odds with the brother. And let me just go ahead and meddle for a minute. You sure can't be in the unity of the Spirit if you're at odds with the pastor. You will never be led of the Spirit to divide the church. you talk in tongues you're not talking in holy tongues if you're speaking evil of a brother or a sister you can talk in tongues do you get a Chinese accent I don't care your tongue talking doesn't convince me of everything your love one for another convinces me Jesus said they're going to know you're my disciples because you have love one for another how do we expect to receive an outpouring from above when we're pouring out junk from our mouths I'm just asking. <laughs> Somebody up in here needs some relief. Listen to this. Somebody here needs to quench the spirit of your flesh and submit to the unity of the spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody, the Lord showed me this morning. I was praying. The Lord showed me very clearly. Now, this is amazing to me, Brother King. You came to Saxton wanting to preach one of them swinging from the chandeliers. 
And the Lord had you deal with some stuff. Well, I'm going to be honest. I wanted to come down here and swing. Y'all still got chandeliers. We took ours out. I still wanted to swing. The Lord wants me to deal with some stuff. So, l- listen. Somebody needs to hear me right now. The Lord spoke to me this morning. And I, I typed this as fast as I could. This is what thus saith the Lord is. I want to pour my spirit out so bad, but I will not pour it out on disunity. Now, I don't know who you are. I may be preaching to some of my own folks right now. I don't know who it is up in here. But somebody is stopping revival in your family because what's coming out of your mouth does not match what's coming from his mouth. Your attitude towards some others, whether it's the pastor or someone across the aisle, it's stopping your personal revival. You can't get a breakthrough if you're focused on a breakup. Here's something else that's amazing to me. We want to repent to God. We, there's so many times. I mean, we call for repentance on something and the altars will fill up. Oh, bless God. I love that. But if we say, go repent to your neighbor. Sure, sure. If we say, if anybody here has odd against someone else, go to them right now and ask for forgiveness or forgive them or whatever. Ain't nobody moving. Sure. You're right. But if I said, if there's anybody here, if I did one of those, you know, every eye closed, every head bowed, show of hands, who in here has got a problem with somebody in the church, I guarantee you somebody here is going to raise their hand. But if I said, all right, now go to somebody. Me? Preacher's crazy. You're right. we, we'll, we will submit to God, but we won't submit to one another. I'm pretty sure there's a scripture that says, submit yourselves one to another. Yes. Yes. If we want a good old-fashioned outpouring of the Holy Ghost, we got to have the same kind of relationship in here that they had on the day of Pentecost, where they were in one mind and one accord. See, this is what's so amazing to me. Peter and Paul couldn't stand each other, but they put up with one another. Because they put their kingdom aside for his kingdom. His kingdom cannot come if our kingdom is still in charge. It's that simple. The return of the first dominion. I want to show you something tonight. Go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 1. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. I, I feel like I'm, I've got that one spirit sitting up here going, Preach it! Preach it! Between him and the pastor here, I, we're in good shape. Let's keep rolling. He already passed the offering bucket. We already got their money, so we're good. I'm sorry that did not come out right. I did not mean it that way. <laughs> That's what you call humor to break the ice in here because some of y'all are icing up on me. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He didn't have any help at all. God by himself. (laughs) And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. Boom. There was light. Verse 4. And God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day the darkness He called night. The evening and morning were the first day. Mm. It's amazing what God can do when he doesn't have anybody confronting him. It's amazing what God can create when there's nobody there to question him. 
<laughs> Ooh, I feel good. It's amazing what God can make out of nothing if He's got nobody complaining. It says here, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. There's not one single reference of somebody going, oh, wait a minute, God, let's talk about this. It's not there. It's not there. Now, we, now, now, God, I know you want this new thing called light, but we've, we've done it this way for the last eon. All right. All right. All right. And God's going, I'm wanting to speak something new. The last thing he needs is our opinion on the subject. Because I guarantee you, if we'd have been there to try to help him, we'd have messed this thing up. You see, the verses we just read here show us the first dominion. Yes. Yes. God was in charge. in charge. The word dominion there simply means kingdom. Micah said, in that day, there's a day coming when people who were a bunch of knuckleheads, who were a bunch of outcasts, who were a bunch of degenerated folks, just horrible people, all of a sudden they're going to become a nation, not just any nation, but a strong nation. He's going to gather them. He's going to rule over them like, a, like they're a flock and he's the shepherd. Yes, yes. Does that not sound like the church? Yes, yes. That's right. He said when that happens, we're going to see the return of the first Dominion. The first authority. The first kingdom. Watch this. When the first dominion appeared on the expanse of all time and space, God had the first word and the final say. In the first dominion, God determined the structure and the process. Stay with me. In the first dominion, God drove out the darkness and revealed the light. Yes. Yes. In the first dominion, God ordered the day and dictated the night. Yes. Yes. In the first dominion, God set up man and brought him down. In the first dominion, God created new life and then multiplied fruit. Yes. You see, in the first dominion, God was in charge of everything. But in verse 28, Genesis chapter 1, and God blessed them. He's talking about the man. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Which could include other humans. Sure, sure. Yeah. This dominion was the second dominion. Right, right, right. Adam's dominion, the authority of man on the planet. Everybody say, that's the second dominion. That's the second dominion. And it's the second one that messed everything up. Yes, it was. Yes. Why would Micah say the first one needed to return yes. if there wasn't a problem? Yes, yes, yes. Now, I don't mean to get real deep in here tonight, but there's a couple of y'all looking at me like a mule looking at a new gate. Hey, listen. Listen, Linda, listen. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about there. In the very beginning, God had nobody questioning Him. God had nobody making suggestions. God had nobody complaining or whining. 
God had no other opinions to deal with. But then, for whatever reason, He creates the second dominion. <laughs> Check this out. The second dominion is the kingdom of mankind. Now, man wants the first word and the final say. That's right. That's right. Pastor gets up and says, Thus saith the Lord, blah, 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 blah. And you go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's right. That's right. I'm going to come back and sit on that one for a little bit, but let me keep going. In the second dominion, man wanted to determine the structure and the process. That's right. Well, no, I, I think we need to do it this way. I think this is the process that needs to happen. And God's going, well, I already set up this. God's going, wait a minute. Um, I, I, put a, I put a seed in the woman and a seed in the man. And when those two seeds come together, we get people. But man says, no, we... God, no, God, we, we don't want those people. All right. And then the kingdom of man decides to pass laws that makes it legal to stop God's creative process. The second dominion really messed things up. The second dominion messed the church up. You see, the second dominion is where uh, Plato's philosophy of the three realms of mankind that a man named Arisian followed, and Arisian takes it into the, the modern church, and then Tertullian steps up, and the next thing you know, we've got this philosophy called the Trinity. That wasn't founded in Scripture. It was founded in the school of philosophy. The second dominion took over. Now hang on, y'all. I'm fixing to get wound up, so you just let me lay some foundation here. You see, when man took over, he brought in darkness and shut out the light. Because he doesn't want his deeds revealed. He doesn't want his sins to be known or shown. And so he wants to bring in darkness. Don't be preaching that truth. You start preaching that truth and it's going to reveal the sin in our life. We can't have that around here. Man despised the day and loved the night. Because their deeds are evil. Man set himself up and then brought others down. Why is it that we think we can have dominion or authority over people that we think less of? All right. All right. This idea of bullying and you know making fun of people and thinking we're better than someone and thinking we're over somebody. That's nonsense. That should never be in God's church that He's in charge of. We're in this thing together. I don't care what color you are. I don't care how rich or poor you are. I don't care what your last name is. We are in this thing together. In the first dominion, God created new life and multiplied the fruit. But in the second dominion, man destroyed life and poisoned the fruit. And every bit of this came into the church. If I had time tonight, I would show you all, all six of these concepts where man decided that he was going to rule the church of Almighty God. You know what? Here's the deal. Jesus said, Whatsoever thing thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatsoever thing you shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. All right. What he was all, what he was really saying right there is, all right. If that's how you want to have it, I'll let you have it that way. That don't mean I'm going to bless it. Why, why doesn't? Why doesn't? Why isn't there an audible voice from God when some preacher gets in a pulpit and starts spewing out false doctrine? Why isn't there a, a voice from God going, "Hey, stop it, bunch of idiots! What are you doing?" Be messing up my word down there. No, 
see, God created the second dominion 